Spawn Camp here. In this video, we'll be going over a few simple ways of referencing scripts in Unity. So let's take a peek at our setup. We have a few game objects in here, but first we'll only concern ourselves with the tank game object. So let's start with the most simple reference. So we have our tank game object, and on it is a tank script. Let's say we want to reference another script that's sitting on this same game object. So in this example, our tank light script. It has a boolean that turns the light on and off. Inside the script, we'll see that it's just a public bool. It says the light active or not active. This boolean is what we want to control through our tank script. For this, we're gonna use git component. So if we open our tank script, you can ignore all this extra code. We'll get to that later. But at the top of the script, I'm going to use a private tank light or the name of your script, and I'm gonna name it tank light also. And it's private here because at the start, I'll assign it by using the git component. So we can say tank light equals get component and then the name of our script. So tank light. And get component is going to go through this game object components and return the first tank light script that it finds. And then we can access the boolean of that script because it's public. So now we could do something like in the update, listen for input.get key down and assign it to L. We could say tank light dot is on equals not tank light dot is on and they'll toggle it for us. So now if I go in the game and press L, the boolean from the other script is toggled through our tank script. To clean up the inspector, you could go and hide the public boolean using hide an inspector. And now there's no chance for us to accidentally flick it on or off. There's two variations of this. So like for an example, if your script was in the child game object, you could use git component in children. And likewise, if it's on a parent, you could use in parent. In the next example, we'll reference a script not attached to the same game object. So we have our tank game object and on it the tank script. So if we take a closer look, it's keeping up with an ammo count. Every time we push the space bar, we'll check if we have the ammo to fire and then subtract it from that script's ammo count. And in the inspector, we can see it go down as we fire. Now we have another script in charge of setting our ammo UI element called ammo display. Inside is our text element, and then we have a public integer called ammo count. And in the update, we just set our text to be the ammo count converted to a string. In the inspector we can change this ammo count value and you can see that our UI updates accordingly. So an easy way to reference the script is by using a public variable. And the tank script at the top will declare a public, the name of the script you want to reference, and name it. And if we save right now we can go into Unity. And we can see that we have this field that we can populate. So we'll find the game object with the ammo display script and just drag it right in the inspector. Now we can just set the integer inside the script by calling it through the script by saying ammo display dot ammo count. So we're actually changing this public integer in our ammo display script equals max ammo in the start. After we remove the ammo from the tank, we'll set it again to our ammo count. So we'll say ammo display dot ammo count equals, and instead this time of max ammo, we're just going to do ammo count. So now when our tank subtracts this ammo, it also sets the integer inside of our UI script to show the correct ammo count. Now like before, we'll clean this up a bit. We actually don't want the UI to update itself every frame, but only when the tank fires. So we'll get rid of this integer, and we're also going to change the update as well. Instead, we'll use a public function called update ammo, and it will take in an integer called tanks ammo. When this is called, we'll set our text to the integer this function receives. Now back in our tank script is complaining because we no longer have the integer to change. So instead, we'll call the function we just made in the other script with ammo display dot update ammo, and we're gonna pass in ammo count because it was just set to our max ammo. And then again at the bottom, after we subtract our ammo from our tank, we're gonna update this function again. And now it works exactly the same as it did, only this time we're calling the function only when we click. 
Now, let's say you hit play and the tank is already in the scene. Your references are going to be fine. Now, if we hit play and spawn in our tank as a prefab, our references are missing. We're going to need another way to get our script reference. We can use find methods for this, but use these sparingly as some use strings to search and that's not very performant. First, we'll change our ammo display reference to private because we're going to be assigning this in the script. In the start method, we're going to get our ammo display reference and we're going to use three different methods to do this. We're going to find it with a name, we're going to find it with a tag, and then we're going to find it by the component. First off, with the name, we're going to say ammo display equals game object dot find. And this is a string, so we'll use quotations. And then in the scene, make sure that the name is identical. So we have a space here, so we're going to add a space. Now after we find the game object, we're going to need to get the ammo display script. So we'll say dot get component, and then we'll get our ammo display script. So now if we spawn the tank, we have our reference. So next we'll find it with a tag. We'll do the same thing. We'll say ammo display equals game object dot find with tag. And this is also a string. So we'll make our tag be ammo canvas. And then we'll say dot get component ammo display. Now in Unity, we'll click tags here and we'll go to add tag. And our tag is going to be ammo canvas. So now we can back out of this, go back to our ammo canvas and set its tag to ammo canvas. And with that set up, if we were to spawn our tank, it will find this script by the tag. Now last up is find by component. We'll say ammo display equals, and this is a little different, we don't need the game object, so we'll just type find object of type, and then we'll put in our script as the type. This will return the first instance it finds of this script and assign it for us. If we spawn in our tank, the references are fine and everything is still working. Next, say we have a projectile script and we want to reference this barrel script. In the barrel script, we just have a public function called explode. When we fire this projectile and it hits the barrel, we want to call that function. So let's look at a couple ways to do this when your objects are interacting. So you can see here our projectile fires and hits the barrels but nothing happens. So looking into our projectile prefab you'll see this object has both a collider and a rigid body. You'll need both objects to have a collider and at least one of them to have a rigid body for the on collision methods to work correctly. So in our projectile script at the bottom we're going to say void on collision enter and it's going to have a collision called other. Then we're just going to have a temporary variable to assign the barrel script to. We'll say barrel and we're going to name it barrel with a lowercase equals and then we're going to use our other variable that this collision gets and we're going to say dot transform dot get component and we're looking for our barrel script then we'll say if barrel is not equal to null So if it got assigned the barrel script, then we want to call this function barrel dot explode. And with everything set up correctly, you'll see that when the projectile makes contact with the barrel, it explodes. Now that's only one type of interaction. You can also use triggers to grab references as well as things like ray cast, overlap spheres, and sphere cast to name a few. I hope this helps show you a few ways to get references in Unity. Until next time, Spawn Camp out. And I never did this, but please like and subscribe. I'm almost to a thousand subscribers, and that's crazy. Anyway, have a good one.